We're not talking about something that's entertaining or sensational. We're talking about your government, wh where you live, your country, your freedoms. Right. And what we're talking about here is things which you see every day, like someone said a long time ago, many will look with their eyes but not see, and listen with their ears but not hear. And that's us. That is this country. We have been looking at things all along and never realizing the significance of the occult emblems that we're seeing today. Europe. A new world order. An international world order. Novos Order Sequorum. A new order for the centuries, for the ages, forever. And creating the kind of uh, that world order that I think all of us would like to see. I think a new world order is emerging. New world order. No conspiracy can deal with exposure. Once the truth is out and the people understand, then they have problems. And I am saying that the, the power of any government is in people. A new world order can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. An era in which the nations of the world, East and West, North and South, can prosper and live in harmony. If you understand that symbols and emblems and things that we see every day are like the letters of an alphabet, if you put them together, they tell a story. If you understand, wake up and understand that we are not in a benevolent government, that, that Plato said, the price good people pay for non-involvement in public affairs is to be ruled by evil men. Graphic symbolism is as important in the 18th century as it is now in the 21st century. So there was a standardized visual language which stood across Europe and of course the United States. At a time when many people couldn't read, this common visual language was taught through the use of emblem books. Emblem books became standard pattern books for engravers, architects, engineers. So by the time you get to the early 18th century, Ripper's emblem book was the standard piece of design equipment that you'd find in any engraver's workshop. That in the old Celtic Druid uh, occultism of ancient England, from which we have gotten most, if about 95%, of our mysticism in America has come from the old ancient English Celtic magicians. We always see pictures of uh, We're talking Merlin. about Stonehenge, right? Yeah, Stonehenge, yeah. right. Uh, Merlin the magician with his magic wands, and all of them, the magicians always have their magic wands. Magic wands were always made out of Hollywood, and Hollywood has been used for many years to manipulate your thinking, to explain mystical subjects to you, and to prepare you to accept certain mystical uh, premises. A classic example, and, I, and I'm not in any way uh, belittling the work, but uh, it's very important to understand Steven Spielberg and George Lucas's work with the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, because you can't understand the Last Crusade if you don't understand the First Crusade. And if you understand that the, uh, 
Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, who was the Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, fighting against? It was the Nazis. Interesting, too, in the uh, Star Wars, uh, according to the Masonic reference works that you can get in any library, the, uh, <clears throat> the Freemasonic Orders of Europe said that there was a little ideologue, a little spiritual entity that gave the knowledge to what the Masons call our hidden masters. That's what Freemasonry re refers to those who lead world Freemasonry. They don't know who they are. No, no Freemason knows who the, the actual leaders of the world organization are. They call them our hidden masters. Well, according to the reference works, there is a little spiritual entity that, that guides the world Freemasonry, and they call him Yoda. And in the, and in the reference works, you'll see this little creature with the, with the pointed ears, and he's called Yoda. Yoda goes back to Judah, or Judah, which goes back into British Israel world Freemasonry, going back to the time of, uh, of the founding of England, and that's why they're today called British. The British, it's a very big difference between being English and British. Brit is Hebrew for contract or a covenant, and ish means man in Hebrew. Therefore, British is the covenant man or man of the so new covenant. So we're talking about Star Wars. So we're talking about Star Wars. We're talking about the evil empire the, uh, and the empire uh, strikes and, back. Uh, and with the empire striking back, New York is the empire state. We're talking about the new empire of new world, America, striking back at Europe in two world wars to overthrow the old Roman dynasties in Europe to take over the world. So what we're saying here is that there is a war going on between gangs to see who's going to ultimately be on the top of the pyramid. After you have all the material things that you could possibly want in life, what is left to excite you? And for many people, the answer is power, global power. They became intellectually elite. They began to think that they had a plan that was better than anybody else's plan. They got the idea that freedom is dangerous. If you give people freedom, you know what? they're probably not going to use it wisely like we think they should. We are smarter than they are. And for their own good, we should rule them. Yes, the, the obelisk, you'll see the Egyptian obelisk here. The Egyptian obelisk points up to the top of the triangle or the top of the pyramid. We're talking about occultic forces. Uh, we're talking about the five-pointed pentagram, which was used by satanic worshippers for thousands of years. If you take the five points off of a five-pointed star or a pentagram, you have left in the middle a pentagon. That's why the United States has a pentagon. The pentagon is directed toward the North Star because according to the ancient Babylonians, that's where you, gar you gather power from the gods of the North in war. We're talking about sex, drugs, rock and roll, violence. We're talking about a... a Con concerted effort to manipulate the human beings of this country into a new order and a new world, and the people are going along with it, docile and have not. And the they say it says idea. Novus Ordo Seclorum. That's Wait, on. That's you know on that the really bill. interests me. That the, the term Seclorum. You, you said earlier uh, that that meant secular. Secular. Word. secular. Now, now secular. doesn't that secular really mean more than uh, you know? Well, these, anything these else? people think of themselves as God. Jerry. Well, but the these secular, are the new gods. But secular. If you ask a minister what secular means, he'll say. The secular world and we Christians, meaning that it's a world, a secular world, without the God that created us. Isn't that true? Yes. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a new God, a Luciferian God, a satanic God who will be the leader of the new world order. So the new world order is the new world order without the old God of the Bible and with the new God, Lucifer, Satan. Now, now, you, we, you, you we take, take a look out, at the pentagram. We want to bring out one point here in relation to what he says. We're not talking about an evil genius somewhere in, in Bavaria. We're talking about America. Here is the new world order. We are in the middle of the most diabolical, conspiratorial movement ever developed on the face of the earth, right here in America. The 33rd Degree Council that meets in Washington, D.C., claims in your literature to, to be the mother jurisdiction of the world, the mother council of the world. Manly P. Hall called them the most powerful organization in the land, that they ordain kings and shape the destinies of worlds. That's called power. In Africa, and the big game hunters in Africa for many years used to, when you go out to hunt the big game, 
You wouldn't go into the jungle to look for the big game. You would hire many of the natives to go out with cans and bottles and surround about a 10-mile circle out in front of you and work in, beating cans and bottles and screaming and frightening your prey, the lion or the animal that you're, that you're looking for, and he's your prey. And you keep closing in, closing in until finally whatever is out there comes out into the open and he's a sitting duck. That is precisely what has been happening for the last hundred years. The Illuminati have been purposely organizing, directing, and financing wars, revolutions, uh, of violence, and bloodshed, so that it will sufficiently impress and frighten the world of humanity into accepting a new order, a new police state that will finally put down all the law and all, uh, the, the, the disorder in the world. And it is the oldest trick in the book. Our greatest enemy is not in a crack house, it's in the White House. It's not in a bar room, it's in the boardrooms. And so the point I'm making is that we are being manipulated from the very top. And we need to wake up and find out that America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave, because we're not free, and we darn sure ain't brave. Freemasonry is a secret organization that they claim is not secret, but sacred. The, the, but it is secret. I can't go to their meetings, neither can you. Even, even the media can't go. So if they've got an evil purpose to change our civilization, and we don't want to change it, they've got to conceal it. The New Age is uh, a term that comes from astrology, which is, you know, thousands of years old and has been linked with occultism, you know, from time immemorial. Now, the Masonic uh, magazine is entitled The New Age, or at least right. was entitled The New Age. And still is. And still is. Are the Satanists involved in the New Age movement? Is the New Age movement really sort of a cover for this whole Luciferian conspiracy, in your opinion? I wouldn't say it's a cover, I would say it's the integral part of it, you know, the, the spiritual heart of uh, what you're talking about, you know, a new world order. In fact, Alice Bailey, who coined the term New Age, who was a, a psychic and a channeler and an occultist, coined the term New Age and also coined the term New World Order. They both came from the same source. In her book, Externalization of the Hierarchy, she said that the New World Order would be based on the ancient wisdom or ancient occultism, which now, is, Madame, is where the term New Age came from. Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky right. wrote a magazine. I've had the, the bound works of that magazine uh, entitled Lucifer, Lucifer Magazine. Uh, she had a lot of followers. Adolf Hitler was one. Uh, he certainly incorporated a lot of the occult uh, symbology well, let me into... Com let me comment uh, on that real yeah, quickly. Cleared right. Yeah, the term swastika, that is not a German term. The, the, the very name swastika is a Hindu word. And it's a symbol. Now, you, most people in the audience have probably never heard of this, but in occultism... The, it, it deals a lot with energies, with powers and forces, and these powers and forces come through something that are called chakras. And the word chakra is a Hindu word which means spinning vortex. Now the swastika is a, a symbol of the chakras that are energized and, and working in unison. So the word swastika is a Hindu word, not a German word. And the word Aryan, the word Aryan is a Hindu word. You know, it has nothing to do with ancient Germans. The Aryans were the, uh, the Brahmin caste of Hinduism. So much of, uh, of the terminology and concepts that Hitler used were from esoteric Hinduism and had nothing to do with, you know, ancient uh, German culture or folklore at all. There was a great debate amongst our founding fathers as to which bird we were going to name as our national bird. But it was always, in my mind, going to be the American Eagle. These are from Masonic writers. In mysticism, the eagle is a symbol of initiation. The eagle was sacred to the sun. The eagle was also represented the great Egyptian sun god, Amun-Ra. So they knew that the, there was a connection between the sun god and the eagle, and that they would use that symbol as a symbol of the initiation into the secrets of the Masonic Lodge, and also of the ancient mystery religion. The skull and bones, for example, when, when Christ was murdered, he was murder, murdered on the hill of what? Golgotha, which means 
what literally place of the skull skull and bones you see and so since then uh the pirates have had on their flag all the uh, satanic evil men in the world have always utilized uh the skull and bones uh and i believe it's my own personal interpretation that it's to mock christ for what they did to him now, at the hill the illuminati came to the united states uh through a um a fraternity, a Faustian financial fraternity. In 1832, and if we take a look at uh, uh, this Faustian financial fraternity, we will see that uh, we have the skull and bones, and we see a little 32 underneath the symbol. Now, George Bush was in there. William Buckley Jr., who would uh, talk in very Edwardian tones. I asked Bill Buckley about his membership in the Skull and Bones in New Orleans. He got up and went running, almost went running out of the room. He, would, he refused uh, to even comment. The George Bundy, I addressed this to George Bundy. He just came completely discombobulated on the stage. I wish I had a picture of that. And event. George Bush was asked one time and he changed the subject. Of course. So That's what it's all about. People We're are talking about our national leaders. The Masons referred to the pyramid as a house for their God to live in. It was sealed up waiting for the New World Order when a God would enter that building and keep it as a house. These Illuminati refer to their offspring and their publications as their children, their offspring. They refer to your offspring as kids. You have kids because you're just like a goat. Sheep. You're sheep. sheep. That's why you have kids. And your children are going to be slaughtered if no. you go along with the program. There's no question about it. They're going to be identified. They're going to be marked. They want it all. There isn't anything that you've got that they're not planning on taking away. They want your children, your wife, your family, your home, everything. They want it all. And uh, if we don't understand this, we've got to wake up. We have to incite a revelation to avoid a revolution. If we follow the other sheep, we will certainly be led to the slaughter. Never in the annals of human history has so few done so much so often to rape, rob, and ravish so many as the warlords and the warlocks of Wall Street and Washington. It's been well said that a person is known by the company he or she keeps. Well, in the world of rock and roll, there's one guy who pops up so often, you'd think he'd invented the backbeat. The Beatles featured him, along with Aldous Huxley and four Hindu masters, on the cover of their Sgt. Pepper's album. The photo montage is made up of what they call people we like and admire, and our heroes. Their choice was a significant one. Aleister Crowley is generally considered to be the most important and influential occultist of the 20th century. Clever, well-educated, and a prolific writer, Crowley was a walking encyclopedia of occult thought and practice. Dubbed the wickedest man in the world by the British press, Crowley preferred his own pseudonym, The Great Beast 666. In August of 1914, the World Magazine published an account of some of the semi-public ceremonies Crowley held in London. Journalist Harry Kemp attended one such ritual and noted, Then came the slow, monotonous chant of the High Priest. There is no good, evil is good. All hail, Prince of the World, to whom even God himself has given dominion. Kemp continued, sounding from all the world, like he was describing any number of contemporary rock concerts. Men and women danced about, leaping and swaying to the whining of infernal and discordant music. They sang obscene words. Women tore their bodices, some partially disrobed. One fair worshiper, seizing upon the high priest's dagger, wounded herself in the breasts. At this, all seemed to go madder than ever. Such was Crowley's ministry at the age of 39. By the time he died 33 years later, fearful, sobbing, and with the last words, I am perplexed upon his lips, his dark legacy had reached sufficient critical mass to almost single-handedly, in the words of the cult writer Robert Anton Wilson, spark a worldwide revival of paganism. Well, in 1918, Crowley uh, took the great magical oath, which was a serious thing for Crowley. 
And he took an oath that he would surrender all of his magical powers that he had achieved until that date to concentrate his energy single-pointedly on the one task of uh, destroying Christianity and uh, reviving uh, paganism. And I think he failed around the world pretty obviously poorly. It's been uh, a remarkable success. The paganism has made a big comeback in an organized way. The old pagan groups in an unorganized way. Our whole society has become more pagan. I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I read Robert Anton Wilson and all this shit. And here we are, we're standing here, we're talking about this and it's real. If you do these things you're told by Alistair Crowley, if you actually do what they say, things happen. Things occur exactly as it's described, and we can all do it. In 1971, Timothy Leary had an epiphany during a tarot reading that utilized a set of cards designed by Crowley. His revelation? That he was Crowley reborn and was to complete the work Crowley began, preparing humanity for cosmic consciousness. Leary acknowledged this powerful connection with the great beast in a letter to Wilson, observing that the coincidences, synchronicities between my life and his are embarrassing. From this connection flowed frequent references to Crowley, his philosophy, and their common destinies in Leary's writings and speech. I've been an admirer of Alistair Crowley. I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over 100 years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said, uh, uh, he was in favor of, uh, of uh, finding your own self and, and uh, uh, do what thou wilt. Should be the whole of law under love. And it's a very powerful statement. I'm sorry he's around now to appreciate the glories of his standing. The phrase, do what thou wilt, was taken from the Book of the Law, Crowley's most renowned work and one whose composition is worth understanding in the context of our study. While visiting Egypt in 1904, Crowley's first wife, Rose, began going into spontaneous trances, muttering things like, they are waiting for you, and he who was waiting was Horus. Intrigued, Crowley and Rose went to visit the Cairo Museum. From a distance, she spied a glass case and exclaimed, there, there he is, upon inspection. The case did contain an image of Horus painted on a wooden stale. But what particularly stunned Crowley was its exhibit number, 666, is known as the number of the beast. Convinced now that something supernatural was happening, Crowley went back to his hotel and performed a ritual, summoning this higher power. Over three successive days, beginning on April 8th, the book was channeled through Crowley while in a trance. And the content of this revelation? I am the snake that giveth knowledge, the spirit said. To worship me, take wine and strange drugs, whereof I will tell my prophet. Falling on precisely the wrong side of the Bible's account concerning the fall of man and Satan's role, this snake spirit begins the revelation by telling man that he is a god, that reality is essentially an illusion, sin a myth, and that ethically there's no greater commandment than the law of Philemon, Greek for will, as famously stated in the 40th verse of chapter 1. Do what thou wilt shall be law of the law. Well, today that same law has been written, spoken, or sung about by more contemporary artists than even Robert Anton Wilson would have imagined. John Lennon, Jim Morrison, the Black Crows, Chris Robinson, and Marilyn Manson have all trotted it out in one form or another as words to live by. Harry Smith inserted it into the original handbook that came with his renowned anthology of American folk music. David Bowie, The Only Ones, The Electric Hellfire Club, Alpha Bell, Frogging Gristle, Numb, Ancient Ceremony, Eddie and the Hot Rods, Death SS, Theater of Tragedy, Cult Disciples, 
Ethereum, Psychic TV, Celtic Frost, Bruce Dickinson, Moonspell, Graham Bond, Sepultura, Edge of Sanity, The Lords of the New Church, and Marilyn Manson, among others. <laughs> The band 311 not only uses Crowley's Law as a lyric, the bass player had it tattooed on his leg, as well as Crowley's Tree of Light design on his back. Punk band Unwritten Law had Crowley's Law written on their concert t-shirts. Among rock artists who have studied and embraced aspects of Crowley's magical system, Daryl Hall, Sting, Coyle, and Killing Joke, among many others, could relate at some point in their careers to Bowie's comment. My overriding interest was in Kabbalah and Crowleyism, the whole dark and rather fearsome neverworld of the wrong side of the brain. Director Donald Camell. The man behind the underground film performance used to enjoy telling friends that, as a child, he would sometimes be bounced on the knee of the wickedest man in the world. Significantly, the film starred the Stones Mick Jagger and Anita Palindrome, herself a devoted occultist, and explored nihilism and insanity through the metaphor of rock and roll. The only performance that makes it that really makes it, that makes it all the way, is the one that achieves madness, right? Kamel also played the role of Osiris in Lucifer Rising, the film by another Crowley devotee, Kenneth Anger. Anger directed and produced a number of occult films that utilized the talents of rockers Marion Faithful, Mick Jagger, Jimmy Page, and Bobby Bosolet another Crowleyite who was later convicted of murder in relation to the Manson cult. And Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page's fascination with the Great Beast is so notorious, it rates its own link on a website dedicated to Crowleyana. From studying magic as an adolescent, purchasing Crowley's old house, buying an occult bookstore and naming it after a periodical Crowley published, inscribing Do What Thou Wilt onto the runoff vinyl for the first pressing of Led Zeppelin III. Even acting out rituals on stage that look an awful lot like those described by the Beast in his, quote, instructions to his magical order. Page minute when he said, I've employed his system in my own day-to-day -day life. While few artists have shown the same level of dedication to Crowley's life and philosophy as Page, or the members of Coil, or any number of satanic metal bands, there's one sense in which Crowley's legacy has become central to the spirit of most of rock and roll. We'll discuss this in more detail in part eight of this series, but for now understand that his primary message was simply, find your true will and then do it. Thou hast no right but to do thy will. Do that, and no other shall say nay. Every man and every woman is a star. Which, when you boil it down, really means there is no God but man. This is not to say literally that there is no God. Satan knows there is, as do all men, if but just deep in their hearts. The crux of Crowley's demonic creed was just that each individual has no higher authority than their own will, that we are free to live life as we please. And this was the lie that the serpent hissed in the garden, and the deception that has become the siren chorus that floats through the world of popular music. We're talking about a global government that's in existence right now. We're not talking about a nation that is going, we're talking about a nation that is gone. We do not control the government of the United States of America. The United States of America is controlled by this evil arc. They control the money system, they control the State Department, they control the presidency. 
And if you take a look at the fasci on each side of the uh, speaker's podium in the Senate, you're going to find that we have a new world order in place. What do we have to do? Inside a revelation to avoid a revolution. Or wait for the second coming. The choice is up to you.